Okay, I'm Sophie Messing, and I'm very proud to present my app, Alterfy. And so I've actually done, uh, I've recorded a pre-recorded video, um, so you can go ahead and play that now. All right, here we go. So um, you can make that full screen. Alterfy is an augmented reality alter building app for iOS. Uh, it's built with the Swift programming language and uses Apple's AR kit and reality kit frameworks. And I built the interface using Swift UI. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about why I made this while we kind of watch our first alter come into being. Um, so what is an altar? Uh, an altar is a structure, often a pedestal upon which offerings are made uh, for a divinity, a higher power, a higher purpose, a memory, or maybe someone was lost. And altars are usually found in the home or in a place of worship and generally represent a mindful space, a sacred space, a contemplative space set apart from the rest of the world. Um, and so what is augmented reality? As we can see, AR is an interactive experience of a real world environment. Uh, this is where digital objects and enhancements can be projected and placed in the real world space using a mobile device's camera. I apologize, it's a little bit choppy video, but um, Alterfy simply allows us to create and revisit these sacred spaces. And so I went down to Lake Washington yesterday to build a couple of altars. Um, so, we're gonna add a few things. This is Rodan's The Thinker. So we can see, we can move around it. Uh, we can really interact with these objects in space. And um, this, is, this is our first altar. And so in a moment, I'm going to hit the save button on the bottom right corner, and that will create uh, a file name with a unique date time uh, that we can come back to later. So in our main UI, I'm going to walk over to another part of the beach and at the top, I'm going to hit create new altar in just a moment. And because the altar is invoked uh, where our device is, we actually start from the ground up and we actually can pull up our device to reveal this structure. Uh, and so here we are down by the water. It's so beautiful. We can see um, AR kit and reality kit are these really robust um, AR frameworks. So we can add lighting, we can add shadows. It really has the appearance of existing in space. And um, so we'll go ahead and add some models from a curated selection of 3D models. Um, these are really cool. It was, it was so much fun to work with 3D content um, because they're just so beautiful. Um, some of them are made um, like rendered on, using a computer and then others are created using this process called photogrammetry uh, where 3D modelers will go into go to historical sites or wherever or just you know grab something in their home and take thousands of photos of, of an object and stitch them together into these beautiful 3D models. Um, so the essence of this app is just kind of creation, just being mindful. Um, we can use pretty intuitive drag and drop gestures to move, rotate, and scale. We can pinch to rotate, make them bigger, or smaller. Uh, and I realized down by the lake, like it's really only right that we make a duck shrine. Um, so this is the altar to the duck. And so here we are, have our centerpiece and we're just being creative. And so let's see. Um, some of these models are actually from museum collections or from, um, from like natural conservation. So some of these are like taxidermy. Um, and so you can kind of imagine my surprise at this moment, uh, a bunch of kids like ran into my camera view and started throwing like skipping rocks into the lake. And I had this moment where I was like, oh, you know, I better start the recording over. And I was like, no. This is augmented reality. This is what it is. Um, we are here, you know, such an important part of this process, especially if we're invoking this in public is, you know, being aware that we are in, in real world space and being really thoughtful about those relationships that we have with our surroundings. Um, so I thought that was kind of a beautiful moment. Um, so finally, you know, we're adding a couple garnishes to the altar few roses, you can add as many as you want. Uh, let's see, that's looking beautiful. So we can back up 
And because these are anchored in real world space, um, we can move around it and these objects are gonna stay where they are. And so it really becomes this very sculptural element that we can move around, we can contemplate it, uh, we can look at it and just spend time with it for as long as we want. Um, however, we might decide uh, in a moment that we added something we didn't like or we wanna remove an element. So I can go ahead and demo that now. Um, a chocolate bar, not really appropriate for the duck shrine. So we can double tap to delete. Whoops, we accidentally deleted our beautiful vase. So not to worry, uh, we can replace it with this beautiful little temple. This is an example of the photogrammetry process that I mentioned. Um, this is a, a model of a real world object created with images. So we're just gonna move and scale in place. And this is really what I enjoy the most about this project is just this kind of contemplative, arranging of things, finding the, the um, kind of relationships between these objects that just feel right. And so I think we're done. That's our duck altar. Uh, so in a moment, we will head back to our main UI and let's try and load up that first altar that we built from 12.49 p.m. AR is tracking real world space. And so the camera is looking for points that it's seen before and trying to rebuild a world uh, that it can recognize. And so look at that. Uh, the camera has been able to identify, we've been here before, we've built an altar here before, and so our altar is just where we left it. Uh, it's looking so beautiful under that tree. And it's nice, you know, just to spend time looking at it. Um, and one of my favorite features is long press to trigger animations. So check that out. Look at those candle flames. How real does that look? <laughs> Um, and so that is that is our save and load and, and the persistence part of it, um, being able to save and load these creations was actually one of my biggest challenges. So I'm, I'm very proud of that. Um, finally, we can use a simple swipe gesture to delete any files we no longer need. And that's it for my demo. Uh, thank you so much to everyone who supported me and debugged with me and talked to me and brought me food and um, you know, I really could not have done it without you. And I, I just, I'm very, very grateful. Yay. Amazing. Thank you. I think ah. we're all kind of just struck with the beauty and creativity of that, um, which makes me want to dig in just like a little bit more on your process. I'm curious if you came to this from a place of, um, the altar itself, or if you came to this from a place of like, I want to do AR. What can I find that that goes with that? Like, how did you journey towards bringing these two things together in such a beautiful way? That's a great question. Um, I so the and it was interesting the the process of developing this. Um, there were so many changes and so many different tech, you know, trying out different tech stacks. Uh, and so the AR piece of it came later. I, what I wanted to do was create a game or some kind of environment where you can build a virtual altar. Um, and I realized that. Uh, Apple's AR kit and reality kit frameworks were so powerful. And um, so they would give me the ability to move and interact with um, these creations and also place them in the world. And for me, that was just like such a win. Um, and it gave me, uh, it, it kind of like bringing in AR in that way allowed me to think a lot more deeply about kind of uh, the, the conceptual nature of it and, and sort of how augmented reality interacts with our world and what these things are and if it's a representation or simply a an experience. Um, and so there's there was this really fun kind of creative and conceptual piece that I got to bring in. Wonderful. Thank you for walking us through this and huge congratulations on completing this massive step in your time at Ada. Thank you very much. Thanks, Sophie.